Those little white bumps on your face are not milia. They're actually calcium deposits. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about calcium deposits in the skin, what they look like, how to identify them, why they happen, and some interventions and treatment modalities that might be offered to address them. Calcium deposits on the face can fool people because they can look like various other skin conditions like milia or maybe acne scars. Calcinosis refers to the deposition of calcium in the skin, beneath the skin, skin, in the muscles, or in different organs. When the calcium deposits occur in the skin, it's referred to as calcinosis cutis. And there are actually four main categories of calcinosis cutis, basically reasons why you might all of a sudden have calcium deposits popping up in your skin. The first main category is called dystrophic calcinosis cutis. Dystrophic calcinosis cutis arises as a result of some sort of injury, inflammation, infection, or a cancerous process in the skin. It has nothing to do, however, with problems with calcium metabolism. Your calcium and your phosphate levels, if checked, are completely normal if you have dystrophic calcinosis cutis. You just have calcium that gets deposited in the skin as a result of some sort of injury. Acne scarring can bring about deposition of calcium into that damaged tissue, and it might present with little white firm nodules, say on the jaw, the cheeks, a lot of you guys might be mistaken those little white bumps as milia and you've tried creams you've tried exfoliants you've tried topical retinoids because you've heard those are good for milia and they're not really doing anything could be calcinosis cutis that you're dealing with certain tumors in the skin can cause deposition of calcium the most common skin cancer basal cell carcinoma one might find calcium deposits in those tumors there's also a non-cancerous skin tumor called called a pilometric Homa, it's hard as a rock and often is calcifying. Maybe you had extensive skin injury. Say for example, you were in a really bad motorcycle accident and you you know, injured either your arm or God forbid your face, that might heal with dystrophic calcinosis. There are certain autoimmune conditions that impact the skin to a greater extent than other autoimmune conditions. For example, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, lupus erythematosus. These are conditions that I pretty much have a dedicated video on with the exception actually of dermatomyositis. So if you have these conditions, check out those videos. Maybe in the future I'll do one on dermatomyositis. But calcium deposits are a big uh, finding in these conditions as it relates to the inflammation that comes into the skin because of these conditions, especially scleroderma. Scleroderma often is accompanied by dystrophic calcifications. As a matter of fact, there is a constellation of symptoms known as the crest syndrome and the c in crest stands for calcinosis then there is the r is raynaud's the e is esophageal dysmotility the s stands for sclerodactyly where you have this tapering of the fingers and then the t stands for telangiectasias crest syndrome. Some people develop problems with the fat beneath the skin. It's called a paniculitis, different types of inflammation in the fat. That can heal with dystrophic calcinosis. And then there are certain hereditary genetic syndromes, conditions where you have calcium deposits in the skin. For example, a condition known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. There are actually many different subtypes of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I'm not going to get into all of them in today's video, but if that's something that you have, check out my video on Ehlers Danlos hypermobile type. I go into more details with regards to skin findings in that video. Some people even develop calcium deposits as a result of varicose veins that damage the skin. So that's dystrophic calcinosis. Remember, calcium levels, phosphate levels, totally normal. There's no underlying abnormality with your calcium metabolism. That's in contrast to the next type of calcinosis cutis, which is metastatic calcinosis cutis. That sounds like cancer, which sends out metastases. But with metastatic calcinosis cutis, you have abnormal metabolism of calcium and or phosphate. For example, some people develop a problem known as hyperparathyroidism. The parathyroid hormone is abnormally high. That's a hormone that plays a key role in controlling calcium and phosphorus metabolism in the body. So when that's too high, you can have problems such as calcinosis cutis. Sometimes underlying cancers can cause 
abnormalities in calcium metabolism that's known as a paraneoplastic phenomenon, meaning para around a neoplasm, a cancer. You can also develop metastatic calcinosis cutis as a result of taking in dietary supplements, specifically too much calcium carbonate, aka milk alkali syndrome. This can not only lead to calcium deposits in the skin, but also renal failure, kidney failure. Very dangerous. Calcium carbonate uh, supplements are often taken for indigestion like Tums, but if you take too many, you don't follow the recommendations, or maybe you have underlying kidney disease, so you don't metabolize these things as efficiently, well, you can de develop calcium deposits in the skin. Speaking of supplements, excessive intake of vitamin D supplements can lead to calcinosis cutis, metastatic calcinosis cutis, because it leads to increase in calcium. Sarcoidosis is also a condition that can lead to metastatic calcium deposits, abnormal calcium metabolism, chronic renal failure, and something known as calciphylaxis, which is essentially calcium deposits affecting the blood vessels that cause a very severe and painful type of injury that is, you know, requires immediate medical attention. The third type of calcinosis cutis is idiopathic, which means we don't really know why it happens. One of the most common presentations of idiopathic calcinosis cutis are um, calcific nodules of the scrotum. These almost look like little cysts. They're hard as a rock all over the scrotum, and they're actually pretty easy to remove surgically. So it's not like a life-threatening thing, but why it happens, we're not really clear. But that's an example. Then the fourth type is iatrogenic calcinosis cutis. Iatrogenic means it's the result of a medical therapy or a medical intervention. Sometimes we see iatrogenic calcinosis cutis in people who are getting IV calcium gluconate or who are getting calcium and or phosphate through an IV. Also might develop secondary to the usage of electrodes that have a calcium paste on them. And then in little neonates, babies, say in the NICU, who are having their heel stuck with frequent heel sticks, it can develop a little calcific nodule. Not dangerous, but that is a type of iatrogenic calcinosis cutis. Now the manifestations of calcinosis cutis vary quite a bit depending on the underlying cause. In the case of dystrophic calcinosis cutis from acne, you're going to have firm white to yellow little bumps, little nodules in the area where you had acne in the past that healed with maybe scarring. For the most part, calcinosis cutis develops gradually. It's not as though all of a sudden you have this extensive calcification of the skin. Calcinosis cutis is often without any symptoms, no pain, discomfort, or itch. Usually firm white to yellow little bumps, sometimes comprising larger, more extensive surface areas. In people who have autoimmune diseases like dermatomyositis or scleroderma, the calcium deposits can actually ulcerate and uh, release this kind of chalky discharge, and they can be tender and painful at that point. Now, aside from milia, which can look very similar to calcinosis cutis, there are some other skin conditions that also can look like calcinosis cutis. For example, molluscum. Molluscum are these little firm yellowish to skin-colored, flesh-colored bumps that have a little central dell. They're umbilicated. They're rock hard, and they're actually caused by a virus, the molluscum virus. If you've ever heard of this, if it's something that you or you know maybe your child is dealing with, check out my video on molluscum. I go into detail as to how to get rid of it, how to prevent its spread, and the different treatment modalities there are available for treating molluscum. It can be quite a pain for the individual dealing with it to, to go through. Then there are these little bumps that are um, kind of yellowish in appearance, might be um, confused with calcinosis cutis called xanthomas. Instead of being filled with calcium, these are filled with lipid, seen, for example, in the setting of um, abnormalities in your lipids. Check out my video on xanthomas. I go into detail with regards to the underlying uh, issues that lead to that and the different treatment modalities that are available. But it's important to distinguish calcinosis cutis from uh, xanthomas as the treatments are different. Believe it or not, you can actually have bone formation in the skin. It's known as osteoma cutis. Looks a little bit similar, but rather than being calcium deposited in the skin, it's actual bone being produced abnormally in the skin. And then there is gout, a condition where you have uric acid crystals being deposited in little nodules in the skin. Oftentimes, for example, on the elbow, very, very, very painful. Calcium
Glossinosis cutis can be diagnosed on a skin biopsy. You're gonna see these large amorphous blue crystalline structures. I'll show you an image here so you get a sense uh, of what it looks like. In contrast to milia, with milia, you're gonna see a large cyst. And with say osteoma cutis, you're actually gonna see evidence of bone in the skin. The treatments for calcinosis cutis will depend on the underlying cause, how extensive. Certain medical therapies may be indicated, such as a medication known as diltiazem, sodium thiosulfate, probenicid. When the calcinosis cutis is localized, small, a curette, which is a little tool that kind of has a sharp uh, circle on the end of it, can be used to pop it out of the skin. I don't recommend doing that yourself. Then there's also CO2 resurfacing laser and surgeries to remove the deposits from the skin. So I hope this video was helpful in clarifying to you guys that, you know, there are other bumps that happen on the face and can kind of be sneaky and look like other things. Um, you know, as you can see, uh, calcinosis cutis kind of looks either like milia or just like closed comedones. All right, guys, so that's a wrap up with regards to calcinosis cutis. Calcium deposits in the skin are a very real thing and they can be mistaken for other real things like milia or uh, molluscum. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys in clarifying this. Now on the end slide, I'm going to put my uh, recent video all about sebaceous cysts. Another thing that you might uh, think is a blackhead or a large pore or an acne cyst, you try and squeeze it and that can take you down the wrong path. So check that video out next if you missed it. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.